The war began with a blast of energy. Cookie and Milk's flight had just been launched from their mother, racks full of signwinders and guns full of armor-piercing munitions, when the first part of the orbital bombardment punched a hole 50 meters wide in the flight deck of the nuclear carrier, which set the tone of the coming war quite clearly. Every single radio frequency was overridden with a message blasted in Chinese, Spanish, English and Hindi before repeating. It announced that Earth had recently come under the domination of the Shorvanti Empire, and all military forces were to surrender to their superior might immediately. As soon as the message ended, every single pilot on the surviving plane stared in horror as hundreds of black shapes began to come down from the heavens, accompanied by beams of deadly light. Laconic, for once fitting his name, summed up the initial minutes of the invasion best. What the absolute fuck just happened? What happened was that the Shulvanti invasion fleet had just finished their initial orbital bombardment and had deployed their gunships to bring down troops and massacred any armoured formations fit to stop their glorious expansion. And at the front of this flew a single gunship, owned by the House of Orlon, and taken out for a spin by the heiress daughter, looking to put some primitives in her gun sights before blowing them from the sky. It's almost like hunting birds, her mother had said one night. Killing primitives who falsely believe that they can lay claim to the skies which we fly. Perhaps when you are old enough, I shall let you take my gunship out and mark some kills of your own. She was old enough, and as her grav engine hummed its deadly tune, she dived towards some of these human aviators who dare fly her sky. Laconic, shut the fuck up, Milk replied quickly. All flights, group up on me. We need to form up and take out... Alarm entered her voice as she noticed one of the shapes beginning to dive towards them. Contact, three o'clock high, closing fast. She roared as bright lances of light speared shrimps FA-18E straight through the cockpit, sending it spiring down to the waist below. The Shulvanti gunship was a thing of beauty. Sleek lines and curved angles hit the depressed gun pods and sleek frost back wings looked quite beautiful as it dove through the fighter wing, trailing flares that flashed brightly, causing radar and the awestruck pilot's planes to fizzle into uselessness. And then she rose. Mickey had time to scream, as a second bracket of lasers took Owl's head off inside the cockpit. He bailed out over open water, watching as the gunship just smashed through the falling remains of his faithful plane. Laughter filled the open comms. Mother said this was like shooting birds, but I see she was wrong. It's easier! A mocking voice called out in English, as the remaining planes began to circle back towards the alien ship, hot and ready to fight. Missiles flew out from underneath the wings of the Goose and Uncle, only to explode well before impact as small turrets from the sides of the ship flashed out tiny lasers, piercing the payloads and detonating them in blinding explosions, before returning fire and coring the Super Hornets straight down the centre. The mocking laughter continued. Milk washed, as every time her allies got a good turn, they would either get shot down or their missiles would be intercepted. And that was if they even locked on. Her eyes flew across multiple instruments, trying to get proper readings and radar locks on the slippery ship. It was like trying to grab a soaked up cat as he barely said radar returns and his IR signature was practically nothing. Does it even have an engine? Milk muttered as she watched it freeze, hover in midair and then sweep his main gun across the deck of the slowly sinking carrier, blowing the sole CIWS gun still firing. Something clicked in her head. She looked around trying to spot who was coming in for an attack run. Juggler, I need you to test a theory. No missiles, go for guns. Juggler sends back a well-mannered grumble as a pair of missiles flew off her racks before the M61 Vulcan, resting in the nose of the Super Hornet, spat out his 20mm armor-piercing rounds. And for the first time, the human pilot scored hits on the Shilvanti gunship. Juggler broke off seconds before a beam of light from the point defense system punched right through where his cockpit used to be. A gash ran from nose to tail of his aircraft, and as fuel began to leak out, he vectored away, trying to get out of the line of fire before bailing. So it doesn't have shields. What good is that when we can't hit it with missiles? Wizard called over the radio. Because the 20 marks barely scratched the paint. I saw a flag cover the PD turrets, Preacher calmly reported, strafing the now moving gunship of his guns to confirm the sighting. They cover when taking kinetic fire to protect the lenses, probably. Find a single coverage point and we can exploit it. His report came seconds before the gunship twirled almost on the spot and put a laser blast through his engines, forcing the 50-year-old atheist to bail over open water or crash nose first into the deep blue sea. 
Calvin's blocking coverage to the rear. Probably a hundred meter gap from the rear where it's just a single turret blocking it. You need to get damn close to make that shot, and I don't think we can push hard enough to get in without the point of shredding us. Jester called out, serious as ever. Especially not without losing something you'd rather not. A burst of light went through his engine as he wheeled away from a gun run. Going down! His final report informed the group before the leaking avgas was ignited by a stray point defense laser. Milk washed her systems, as of the 20 planes launched from the carrier, only four remained. Three, she amended. Two allies left. We needed to do something fast. She toggled her cons at interplane talk. Cookie, we got two friendlies still in the air and that damn UFO hasn't taken more than cosmetic damage. Cookie was silent. Cookie, I know you can hear me. We need a... Oh! She was slammed back into her seat as Cookie flared the afterburners for a split second before flashing the air brakes, causing the Super Hornet to jerk and almost jump in the skies, nearly weaving between a pair of lasers meant to bisect the fragile aircraft. I know, he replied simply. I have a plan. Get ready to empty the rack. He began to turn away from battle, eyes closing for the briefest second as the gunship speared Prowler and Patriot's F-18 clean through, sending a wing sent flying by the explosion directly into Sweet's cockpit splattering the metal red before everything fell silent. They were running. Laughter came over the radio. Oh, so it seems the primitives know their place. Go on, run away from your rifle overlords. I shall enjoy chasing you down. That voice. That damned voice. Milk grit her teeth as Cookie poured more and more speed out of the beleaguered airframe. The gunship began to close the distance, alien engines producing much more speed than a G Tobafans could ever dream of. The alien began to count down. Ten. Far enough away one could reasonably expect to dodge a targeting computer. Nine. Closer, still outside the danger zone. Eight. Dead, no way to dodge. Seven. Closer still, she wanted to read the lettering on their telephone seemed. Six. Milt looked back and saw the guns began to charge. Cookie, Milt began. One. Cookie replied before killing the engines and throwing the nose up, every flap extended. The pair felt the hammer blow of inertia in their teeth as the plane became less of an aerodynamic killing machine and more of a full body air brake. The craft shook as every stress alarm rang at once and the gunship flew under and past the two. And then the nose dropped and the minigun began its hellish roar. They were inside the envelope. Fire everything! Cookie roared as Mill brought every missile online with a simple fire mission. Ahead. Two sidewinders. Four SARAAMs and two sparrows, along with all 578 20mm rounds, roared out from the sole surviving aircraft straight into the rear of the Shilvanti gunship. Laughter turned to screams as explosions rocked the UFO, sending bits of strange metal and technology flying into the sea as smoke began to trail out. And then slowly, inevitably, like the collapse of a skyscraper, the gunship began to fall. Milk and Cookie were silent. Watching the enemy which had wiped out their flight fall into the deep, blue waters of the Atlantic and sink below the waves. They were silent as they turned for shore, every weapon expended. They were silent as they landed on a civilian airfield, hangars empty and runway clear. They were silent as they painted a purple single kill tally on their plane. They were silent as ground troops with strange vehicles, strange armour and purple skin cornered them and ordered them to surrender. They were silent as they crushed out the cigars and put their hands up. No need to get killed in a war they cannot win. They only spoke four days later inside Shulvanti Prisoner of War Camp number 773.